Hi everybody, hi everyone, hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're really, really excited to have you here for our first Tunga After Expert Tuesdays, which is an event that we're looking to host at least twice every month. And we'll be bringing you some of some really, really interesting people in the tech world. Um, you get to interact with them, learn and find out about tools that would really make your work easy as a developer or basically things that are interesting in the tech world. Um, for the participants, thank you for joining David, Lulu, Daniel, we recognize you. Hello, Mifa, thank you for joining us. We're really excited to have you here in your busy schedule. Um, let's give it about three, three, four minutes while everyone else is about, is about to join and uh, the rest will find us at the top of the hour. Yeah. I'm at least attending. Okay. We're doing good so far. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to be entertaining you. While we, while we give it the three, four minutes that we're waiting for, for people to be able to join us. It's a bit difficult hosting events like this, especially when people are having, uh, some people are probably in the middle of their work day. Shubomi, you can, you can agree with me, Paul, Shubomi. I think in Nigeria yeah. right now, it's, it's, it's about 3 p.m., right? You're yeah. muted. <laughs> yes, it's 3 p.m. It's 3 p.m. It's 3 p.m. in Nigeria, and it's 5 p.m. here. As you can see, me and Paul are already exhausted. We already did close out for that day. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, so it may be a bit, it may be a bit slow for people to join, but eventually we'll be able to pick up. And those who are not able to make it will definitely be able to get the be, recording. Yeah, definitely okay. get the recording. Yeah. And for those who have signed up, we'll be sure to, to, to let you know when we, the recording is ready for you to watch, such that you get to know about an amazing product that has come out of Nigeria. Yeah. Give it two more minutes. Jerry, thank you for joining. Ismail Ugot, I don't know if I pronounced your name right. Thank you so much for joining. Dennis Alexandra, Alexander, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope this session will give you the, the ideas or the tools that are going to allow you to resolve the questions that you may have. Yeah. Um, one more minute and we'll be able to start. One more minute for one more person. Yeah, one more minute for one more person. <laughs> Ishmael, thank you for joining. Ismail, thank you for joining. <laughs> um, we're really excited to have you here and hopefully it's as interactive as you hope it will be. Okay. Okay, we are at our five minute mark. We're going to go and, and start. Thank you so much for joining us today, everybody. My name is Esther Nisima. I am the head of the developer community in Tunga. We are a um, recruitment platform and we find remote jobs for African software developers. So if you are on this call today and you're looking to launch your career in tech, please feel free to check out Tunga at the end of this webinar and see how we could be interesting for you. I would like to introduce some interesting people that I, I will be hosting with today. That is Paul Angela Gabriella. Paul, Hi. please welcome to the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> this is Hi. Paul's first time joining us and I'm really excited to have her. She will be my co-host and we'll be, we will be taking you through this session. Um, 
lean in the background thank you for making this possible mifa as well thank you for making this possible um i would like us to go ahead and start uh this webinar um i would like to introduce to you our first guest of tunga as the expert tuesdays where we shall be having amazing guests <laughs> like Shubomi Oluwalana, who is the CEO of Get Convoy. Correct me, correct me. Who is the CEO of Frame Dev, who have gone ahead to build an amazing product that is getconvoy.io, which is a cloud native application, webhook, that you will get an opportunity to tell us about today. And Please feel free to ask as many questions as possible. I would like us to start first with the housekeeping rules. If you have any queries, this is an open place for you to learn. You can leave your question in the chat. Um, if you have any inquiries that we may not be able to respond to immediately, uh, you can leave them behind and we'll be able to keep to respond after. Please keep your microphone on mute. Um, at the end of it, we can have a bit of Q&A such that you can ask as many questions as possible. Would like to thank you for joining us today. And I would like to introduce Shubomi Oluwalana, CEO of Dev. Please, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for honoring our invite to join uh, the first, to be the first guest on Tunga as the Expert Tuesdays. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> um, Interestingly, you have gone on to build an application that is um, that is that is out of the world, that has gone out of the norm that is fintech in Nigeria. I would definitely, and I'm sure everyone here would like to know a bit before we get into the technical, would like to know a bit about who you are um, and how you came up with this crazy idea. Nice, nice. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for inviting us. Um, because a number of my team members that work are free and I on this call, I've seen a number of them. So yes. Um, so I, I at this point I'm I'm not the only one building convoy. Yeah, we are like my team members are here. Um yeah, yeah so I'm Shubomi, I'm a software engineer. Um I've been writing software since since I came out of university, practically. Although I studied accounting as a first degree, but I never worked with accounting. Um, just been doing software since. since, since uh, that is really, really interesting. It's out <laughs> of the box. I, I do not know. I, I don't think anyone here has studied tech or computer science or software engineering. Personally, I did quantity serving. <laughs> Paul did statistics. Uh -huh. Only Lynn. It's only Lynn who had the computer science. Oh, Lynn, the rest of us are just... Interesting. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that same, is quite interesting. Category. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, how did you go on to come up with this idea? Because with, with regards to, to get convoy. Also, to be clear, we came out on fintech. So fintech is the rave in Nigeria or in Africa. But like we actually, yeah. myself and my co-founder Emmanuel, we're building a fintech API. Um, and then we wasn't going well, but we built the API and we're talking to companies to come and integrate. And they started to hack us for a web book implementation. They were like, we don't want to call your API, just send us the events and then we'll figure out what, what to do with the events, right? And like we we couldn't find any suitable solution for webhooks, right? We asked our friends what what they were using for webhooks, and everybody was winging, and so we decided to take a stab at the problem. Um, and so we built the first version. It was we were able to launch it at Bycoins, um, and then we built the second version. Other guys picked it, like I think Get Wallet and one other company, and then we just made a complete pivot from our fintech API to Convoy. Well, you are talking about webhooks. I'm not sure if everyone on this call knows what a webhook is. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so let me. I understand, me... but explain, explain. <laughs> so let me let me give you a, a brief description of how it works from like a, a layman perspective. So the way I like to explain it is if you if you pick up your phone, for example, and make a purchase on Shopify, right, and you use Stripe checkout. What would happen at the background is Stripe checkout, Stripe will send an event to Shopify that, oh, 
Shubo me purchase something for ten thousand, ten thousand naira, ten thousand dollars. Um, you can proceed to give him the delivery of this package. Now, if that event fails to come through from Stripe to Shopify, you will have been debited, like your card will have been debited, but you will not receive your package, right? So that's what that's what's called a webbook event, right? It's, it's effectively like the glue of the modern internet, the way I think about it, so the glue of the API economy. So if a company publishes an API, they need to provide you a way to receive events in an asynchronous fashion. And mm -hmm. that is, that, that is that's, that's what holds this API together. So what we are effectively doing with Convoy is we are saying, when the, perhaps the person that is going to build the next tribe is on this call, and that we never can tell. When you want to build an API, you don't effectively have to think of the of building a webbooks infrastructure from start or from scratch. You can leverage Convoy and just have high quality webbooks out of the box. Basically, yes. Paul, please come in. <laughs> Hello, it, it's interesting. I have uh, like a question from like on top of this. Like after you have explained what our book is. Uh, maybe could you tell us some of the common misconceptions people have about webhooks? Um, okay, okay. Um, so when you think about webhooks, and I have something in my slide which I will show um, when I try to like do a presentation. Um, yeah. When you think about webhooks, so when people when people think about webhooks, people think webhooks is simply just HTTP post. You just post to an endpoint, and that's the end of the story. But that is the beginning of the story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is like literally the beginning of the story. And for us too as well, we like when we started, we thought, okay, these are the problems we need to solve. We knew what we were going after. But when we launched, we saw new problems. So yeah. old problems plus new problems is just a whole lot. So let me explain. The first thing you want to deal with when you're building a webbook infrastructure is you want to deal with bad endpoints. So people's endpoints are configured in different ways. Right, mm -hmm. we saw an endpoint in production that was responding with data of up to like five megabytes. If you decide to build a webbook system where your users can go to their dashboard and see what was sent and what was returned, mm -hmm. right, you want to save the data that is coming back from the endpoint. If mm -hmm. you save the entire thing, you start to save five megabytes of data per webbook request. That's a lot. So you have to deal with um, bad endpoints. You have to deal with deliverability. You have to ensure that this webbook event gets to the end point. You have to place in retrying mechanism. And at some point, imagine you, you have a new FinTech application and one day Don Jazzy goes and tweets about your application and then you have load of yeah. um, all over the place. Yeah. You don't want to bombard consumer apps with events. You want to rate limit the events to their endpoints at their configuration, right? Some other applications have very specific needs, right? If you are building webhooks in um, the payment sector, for example, <clears throat> most of them have firewalls, like, like they have strict security mechanisms. You have to tell them, this is my IP address and this is where my events are coming from, right? So we convoy, like all of this fragmented implementation of webhooks is just built into like the binary. And effectively what you can do is if you are a payments company and you need static IPs, you pick it out of the box. If you are a, <clears throat> if you're like Twilio and you're sending lots of events, you need high performing rate limiting, you pick it out of the box. If you are pager DT, you need too much flexibility in your webhooks, you have flexibility in Convoy, you pick it out of the box. So in that case, uh, Convoy is able to democratize the best of each of those worlds. Exactly. Exactly. It becomes a silver bullet, effectively. <laughs> I think that's quite interesting. Um, Paul, is there anything else you'd like to ask him about before he gets into it? No, I think he has answered all my questions. <laughs> all the questions. I mean, the way, the way I like yeah. to describe it is yeah. when I did the research, you say, oh, Stripe has brilliant webbooks. But Stripe's yeah. webbooks is designed around security. When you yeah. look at Twilio, Twilio is designed around performance. When you look at PagerDuty, PagerDuty is designed around flexibility. So we are yeah. saying, if you're going to build the next PagerDuty, Convoy is ready for you. If you're going to build the next Twilio, Convoy is ready for you. If you're going to build the next Stripe, Convoy is ready for you. Yeah. <laughs> we are excited to be part of this journey. <laughs> um, well, would you like to take over for everyone that is here? 
Shubomi is going to show us how Convoy works. And if you have any queries while well, he he talks about the use, the different use cases that Convoy is resolving, please leave them here and we shall be able to respond to them. Would you like to present your script? Yes, but it appears I can't. Host is host disabled participant screen share. You have my blessing. Let me do that, sorry. <laughs> Lynn, this is when you're supposed to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, um, um, okay, it appears I can share now. Who can share or panelists? Yeah, you should be able to share. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see your screen. All right, swear books with Convoy, zero to 100. Um, so a brief about me. I'm co-founder, CEO of Frain. Primarily, I'm a software engineer. You can find me online with Shubomi and everywhere. Um, yes, primarily, I'm a software engineer. Um, yeah, so my goal is to simply spark your interest in Convoy, run an instance of Convoy and help you see how it works and understand like where we are going to, um, where we are going to be Convoy. Something I've not said on the call is Convoy is open source. So, and yes, we are passionate about open source. Um, we want to build a community. We want people to come around um, and tell us what we are not doing. And like just, we all just write the code together, democratize the tool essentially um, for everybody, for any developer anywhere, pretty much. So yes, this was the tweet I was talking about. Um, where we started to feel like soup compared to the rest of the networking stack, it is becoming one of the most error components of the modern API economy. We need better tooling for HTTP push. Fun fact is we started building Convoy before this tweet came out. So <laughs> it was right on time. <laughs> um, yes, this was, this was October, 2021. And we started building Convoy early September. Um, yeah. So yes, yeah, so when you, like I was talking about before, when you talk about web books, there are different challenges. On the left, you can see the API provider. On the right, you can see the application, right? And what is essentially happening here is post to the endpoint and you expect it 200. 200 is simply an acknowledgement. Hey, Stripe, I've seen the event. I'm going to go ahead to process it, thank you, right? And like, when you look at all these things, security, you want to sign the payload and ensure that there's data integrity, replay attacks, you want to be sure that this event is not being intercepted by an attacker and replaying it to the servers for malicious reasons. Um, static IPs, for example, if you are giving web books to a company like TMAP today, you need to give them an IP address, else they're going to go to somebody else. Um, reliability, you want to ensure that this event will get to where it's going to debugging and develop, debugging and delivery log. Debugging and delivery log is quite simple. It's saying that, if I have an issue with my web books, I do not need to call an engineer at Stripe. I should be able to log into my Stripe dashboard and debug my events. Like that's the ideal developer experience. Um, you shouldn't have to reach out to support, to push events to you. And the last thing, the second to last thing on this list is dead end point. So when you, you as an API provider, when you are pushing events to your users, when the endpoint stops receiving events, you know ahead of time, you have the data, you can as well notify them that the endpoint is dead and they need to do something about it, right? Many web book information don't have this, don't have this, don't have this implementation. Once your endpoint is dead, you literally just wait and pray that one of your customers will call in and then there is already a customer impact. And scalability, as you grow, how do you scale your web book system? Um, in relation to your backend services. Um, and these are the problems that Convoy is trying to solve. So if you look at this, you see the API provider, you see the application. When you come into Convoy, you have the API provider, you have Convoy in the middle and you have the endpoint. So effectively, the way you use Convoy is, it's a service, you, you, you download the binary, you run it on your, your cloud environment, depending on where you run applications. You post events to Convoy, Convoy handles everything to your client, right? And enables you to um, give the best experience. 
So I want to quickly show how this works and um, like in like how many minutes I have left. I will try to copy this and put it in the chat. Um, so, so all the configuration files um, that I'm going to use are, are there. I, I'm also going to share this slide with um, Esther so everybody on this call can can use it. Um, all right. All right. So here we can start. Um, can you still see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, one second. All right. All right. Oh, I need to share multiple windows. Um, While he sets up, guys, please send in your questions. If you have any queries around webhooks and the challenges you've experienced and the different use cases you would potentially like to explore, please send them in. Either you can use the chat or Q&A. All right. Okay. So like I said, Convoy is, a, is open source, it's configured with a JSON file. I am going to, if you're using Mac OS, you can simply do brew install Convoy. I think I have this guy on my system. You guys can see my terminal, right? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, all right, I have Convoy already. Okay, if I do convoy version, I'm on 4.0.4.12. And then all I need to do is run the server with the JSON file. If I come here, it opens up to me. Um, pretty straightforward. If you run on Linux, you can visit, I'm just going to drop this on chat. Um, to download for Linux or download for Windows. So what we're trying to send webhooks essentially, first is this is how the configuration file looks like. You want to, yes, convoy the JSON. Um, specifically, you're telling convoy what ports to listen on. You're providing it with the EDA and the ASH. So why you need an ed the EDA and ASH is simple, right? Like when you send webhook events to your customers, you sign the payload. That's one of the security mechanisms, the most common security mechanism. When everybody thinks of webhook, they think of stuff like this. So you sign the payload with the shared secrets, and then your users can sign the same payload with the shared secrets and compare the ash. If there is a match that is coming from you, if there is no match, it's coming from a bad person and you reject it. So you configure this guy, um, X convoy signature, this is the default, you can always change it. You configure your ash, you configure, you configure your retry mechanism. And then you can see here, X convoy signature, the ash. This guy is going to use a constant time retry. It's a retry 10 seconds, max out at three retries and then die out. So what we are going to do is pretty straightforward. We are going to use our API to quickly publish an event and see how this works. So I'm going to name this integration one. Also to get this 
to get this spec or this REST API, I'm calling this documentation. You can check the chat. I posted the link to the open API spec. You can import it into your Postman or Insomnia and just follow through. It's pretty um, straightforward. Right, so I can create an application. If I come here and I check, I can see my application, right? Um, so in this scenario, we are simulating that I am PSTAC and there is a new customer and the customer's name is integration one. They are trying to receive events from PSTAC. So the first thing you do is create the application. The second thing you do, I'm just going to save the app ID so we can use that to create an, end, an endpoint. So we're going to generate the web bookstore site um, URL. Copy this guy. And create. Um, if you come back here, you reload. Yeah, you can see your web bookstore site URL. This guy is going to receive all the events. So let me back up again and just just make this more clear. Remember in what I showed earlier is what we are simulating here is this is pay stack and this is convoy and this is the endpoint. So what we simulated here is from the client I just, from my insomnia, I was representing pay stack. I created an application on convoy, named it integration one. That can be anybody, can be any merchant integrating to pay stack today. And then what I then did was I said, this merchant has provided a URL, I sent it to Convoy. Now, Convoy has the knowledge of the merchant one and the endpoint. And Convoy also has the knowledge of what type of events this endpoint is going to receive. Now, this is also something that is not super common in webbook implementation. And that's why Convoy is democratizing it. When you go to Paystack today and you give Paystack a URL to receive webbook events, Paystack can only receive one event and they would send all events can only receive one endpoint and they will send all events to that endpoint. If you go to a company like Stripe, Stripe will tell you, given a URL, give me the events you want me to send to this URL. And we convoy, you have that out of the box. So to just give a quick example of how that would look like, you do payments created and you generate another URL. I'm just going to name this a dummy URL, but we don't really care about this. When you come here and you reload, you see that this merchant or integration one now have two endpoints. One is going to receive all events, regardless of what it is called. And this guy will receive just payment creating, right? So now we have this, the first layer and the second layer working. Now let's push to the endpoint. So how would that work? Essentially how that will work again is Paystack will come back and say, oh, we have a new event called payments initiated, and I'm doing this intentionally. So we, it goes to just one person. Payment initiated, right? Um, the same thing happens, we publish it. If you come to your UI again, you're going to see events, right? Payment initiated, going to integration one, you click on the deliveries, you can see this is a success already. The way we validate this success is we check webbook sites. Yes, and we can see payment initiated. Well, can, can I ask you something that is interesting? Because I, I feel like you've, you've been talking about this and I'm thinking um, in that case, if your server is consistently failing to return that that 200 like you initially talked about for whatever reason there is um and you continue bombarding the endpoint with more events we can all agree it's a dead endpoint right so how yes. in this case would you know and triage that or resolve that as quickly as possible i i, awesome. I feel like someone here wants to find out or wants to know yeah yeah great question um so Convoy has a concept called disabled endpoint, dis dis disabled endpoint, right? Like, and this is also something that you will not find in Paystack today, but Convoy gives you out of the box. So how does this work? Essentially, when you create a merchant, 
you can attach an email address to it. I mean, in the future, you can think about how we can create multiple notification mechanisms to know that there's a dead end point. But for today, what Convoy can do is, I'm going to come back here and look at my application and decide, you know what, I want to update this application and provide it. Let's say we know, let, let me in, update this to Matant 1 or Matant 8 and provide it an email address. I'm going to come here and generate um, a temporary, temporary email address. Oh. At the worst time possible. <laughs> <laughs> give me an email address all right so effectively i'm going to do is attach this email address to this application right yeah yeah authorization field um all right okay if you come back to your dashboard and you refresh this guy, you can see the support email is attached. Yeah. Now what I'm going to do to simulate this um, um, action is I'm going to come to Webbook Society and configure this guy to return a 400. So the endpoint is obviously failing. It is, yeah, right. it would have failed, yeah. Awesome. So what is going to happen here is, um, um, So let's let's. Are let's, you let's going go. to try to send multiple endpoints? Uh, sorry, I think send multiple requests or events to that failed thing. Yes, I'm going to send events to it. So the first thing I want to um, point out is um, when when you convoy by default is a no worry. I'll say it at the end. I think it's a bit confusing to say it now. Um, <laughs> Yes, so, all right, um, let's publish an event. Let's come back to this guy. We click on this, refresh it. It's in the retry state. If you click on it and you look at the response, you can see the 400 bad requests we configured. Yeah. Uh, you, there's nobody requests, nothing because, and we did um, 10 seconds, three times. So we're going to wait. To retry it on the third attempt, it's just going to die. It's, it's dead. Okay. Field, right? Now, when I try to send another event, you notice what will happen here. Um, this guy is processing. Um, one second. Get groups. True. This was what I was trying to explain. One second. Da, da, da. All right. Can you see the email address that came? It alerts you instantly. Uh -huh. So, so what you can do is Convoy exposes. Um, if you look at this configuration, an FMTP configuration. Yeah. Right. So I the instance I'm running on my system, I've I have an API key. Right. Um, yeah. You can you so the way SMTP works, you can configure any SMTP server, Mailgun, SendGrid, whichever one that you use, and then yeah. you get this out of the box. So what we will do now is we would configure um, this guy to respond with a two hundred. First, before we do that, we should see something else. Um, yeah. 
Wait, let me ask, yeah. Uh -huh. So in that case, you have convoy uh, going on to constantly monitor and, and send alerts in case of failure, right? Uh -huh. So in so how how does that differ from 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 what is happening with Stripe and what Trilio is doing? Um. So those people, I I have not used Trilio, so I can't really speak in terms of what Trilio would do. But yeah. Stripe will notify you, right? Stripe, I think Stripe is on the edge of the experience, right? But what yeah. is missing in Stripe as well is while they have great experience. So Stripe is a combination of experience and security, yeah. but they don't have excellent performance because they don't need it, right? They don't have mm -hmm. some things called connection override that is embedded in the way Twilio send events, right? Yeah. So Stripe will notify you, but you think of the company like Paystack, right? They have the engineering resources there, but like Paystack will notify you. If your endpoint is dead, it's dead. Your customers will notify you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know because there are so many people that are using it. But I think um, in that case, Convoy would generally enable the pay stack to, to, to filter through event logs and resend events easily and faster, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, so if we flip this guy, also, I think something is wrong in my configuration. So let me look at this again. It's okay. Um, I think this happens. <laughs> Interestingly, there's a time we had a demo. I was working as product owner and we had a demo. And we were the demo was for the whole company. And let me tell you, things failed after they had worked out in our private demo as a product team. It was quite it was Yes, quite I'm trying to do something. I'm like, oh, <laughs> why is this not working? But effectively, what should happen now is since we've sent an email right to the yeah. endpoint to the to the to the app developers the endpoint is in a is in a disabled state so all the events that are going to be coming from there on are all going to be discarded because yeah. there's no point right we know we have the knowledge that the endpoint is dead is dead so there's no point what, in, in yeah. continuing so continuously bombarding the endpoint <laughs> so i'm going to flip this back to 200 and try to bring the endpoint back to life. So I'm going to come here and refresh and do retry. Retry request sent, processing, processing. Okay, something's wrong with my configuration. Oh. No, no, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. We can, we can proceed while that comes around. Do not worry about. I think what you forgot to tell everyone about is that um, Convoy, on top of being open source, it's built um, with Golang, um, Go, Golang, and yet it allows whatever, it allows you with whatever language you're coming with, whatever your code base is built on to still use it and be as productive as possible. So why, why did you go with that? Um, we, generally just wanted to build something that can scale something that is super fast and we know go is fast go can scale i mean go as everybody's using go to scale in production and um, lots of distributed systems are built in go already many of the libraries or uh, many of the libraries or tools to build a distributed system are first class support in go um and so it, it just felt like it used a, a reasonable tool to go ahead with and something i was familiar with as well um, <laughs> <they> are, <laughs> something along uh along um yes something i was familiar with but yes go is also something that's that is durable has been built has been used to build several distributed systems something that can scale yeah and yeah it was so as someone, because because I think I saw quite a number of Go users here. I see John Miner, John Miner uses Go as well. But as someone who uses Python, or um, how in that case would Convoy be of value to me? Um. So I'm just going to go ahead to 
repository. All right, so this is Convo repository. I'm going to drop it in the chat so that we can get stars. Please, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, um, I, I, this was a, a side point. We have a Ruby client. Um, we, we have a Ruby client and that's the only client we have. There's a Golang client, but it is not as stable or as good as the Ruby client. The goal yeah. is that what I'm saying is essentially is that anybody can build off a client for Convoy looking at the Ruby client or looking at like the Go client yeah. and giving the open API spec. So if you come to the repository, the core repository, the way it works is, and this is also for like contributors or people that are future contributors, um, the way it's done is we annotate all our servers um, with, there is just several annotations to all of the handlers. So whenever we make a new code push, we generate open API specs. So our open API specs are fresh. Yeah. Um, and so you can always find them in the docs directory, import them into Insomia and see the format of request and response and build a client of it for your favorite language, PHP, Python, the environment you, 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 you are building systems. Yeah. But essentially, the only thing you need to build Convoy with, to, the only thing you need to do from a different framework or language perspective is to write your client. And so yeah. now if we write the client for you, then you just need to integrate. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to that. <laughs> we're definitely looking forward to that. And I think, um, has, has it been able to, to be resolved or should we proceed? Yeah, I think we should proceed. <laughs> Sorry, guys, this happens. I'm sure all of you understand. <laughs> uh, so what should we look at? What should we look at as the future of Convoy? Because we know it's resolving quite a number of, of issues, but we want to see more. And when should we expect it? Oh, um, to be honest, we want an active community. That's why we're doing this too. Um, we <laughs> We, uh, we build, we release a new binary every, the 25th of every month. So yeah. to keep up with the cadence of um, future requests and how we like, it also informs how like we want to continue building combo in the future is to iteratively get feedback, ship features fast and just learn versus take a, a longer time frame to build and learn. So effectively, if you contribute to convoy, this, effectively what I'm saying is if you contribute to convoy, this month and it is merged, your feature will go out on the 25th, regardless of any other person's feature. Um, <laughs> I see um, looking for, for people to come and do some open source. We really, really, really encourage it. it it's good mm -hmm. to build your capacity. Yeah. Um, so the future of Convoy, I had something in my slide, um, which is um, if you look closely at this, um, you see that I'm simulating an environment where somebody's building an API yeah. and their API is dependent on three services, MongoDB for Mongo database, DB. Redis for Redis. cache storage and Convoy mm -hmm. for webhooks. Yeah, so it's so there, there are ways you can run Convoy. There are two ways you can run Convoy. So you can run Convoy as a simple binary. It will rely on a new memory queuing mechanism and an on-disk storage and necessarily not need a binary dependence or a third party dependency too to live his life. That's what yeah. I've just demoed, right? Mm -hmm. And the other way you can run Convoy is you can say, you know what, I want to provide it to the persistent storage that I'm comfortable with. You give it MongoDB and you give it Redis and it will still work. Yeah. But the future of Convoy, if you think about it, is we want to look at this fragmented implementation of webhooks across the globe, right? So we've, we've, we've looked across, some people have some unique features, right? Like. I can give examples like I go on and on. Like for example, PagerDT have mutual TLS. They are the only mm -hmm. ones that I've seen that do mutual TLS. So the goal for us is in the coming weeks, we are going to be taking all of these features and battle testing them into Convoy and then remain open source, just democratize it for everybody, any developer anywhere in the world. Um, today, we have a couple of Nigerian companies that use Convoy. Um, mm -hmm in their own environment and on our managed service. So we run a managed service where we deploy it ourselves and you rely on us. Um, we have a number of Nigerian companies that use us. 
we have a couple of US companies that also use us. Um, um, and that's because of we are we have a couple of US companies that use us as well. So the goal is like we said before the call, right? Or before the uh, webinar, it's not web books or convoy for like Nigeria. Or Nigeria, for, yeah. We are going international with this. Yeah, exactly. we're going worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> it is a solution that is that is going to be adopted worldwide. Yes, yes. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the future of Convo when you think about it. You think about it as if there is any unique or weird niche um, web books feature that you need in your integration with some obscure API, Convo will have a provision for we'll it. Have it. Okay. Okay. Well, that's something to look forward to. And, and might as like it will have the obscure features, but it will still get the fundamentals right, which is basic signing payload and all of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's been okay. it's been fun. <laughs> it must have been a fun journey for you to be able to build a product like this. Uh, but we are glad that fintech was able to help you identify a problem and then come up with a solution. Because at the end of the day, as a developer, you are. Um, you you are a problem solver for us. So fun, let, let me let me give you a fun fact, right? Yeah. So when we were applying to YC, um, one of our current investors said, "You know what? You probably do not want to brand yourself as developer tools for the world. You probably want to say you are developer tools for emerging market because we are not sure if YC is ready to fund startups, Nigerian startups building for the world." Right. Yeah. So we're like, oh, that's beautiful advice. And we changed our phrase and we went and we just rebranded. <laughs> uh, and then, like, when we got to the interview, like, the first question Michael Cyber asked us was, Do you guys realize you're building for the world? We're like, Yes. Yes. That is what we wanted to say in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so, to today, the, 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 the kind of keep reminding us that while you are, building in Nigeria, you are actively building for the world. For the world. So that's, yeah. that's the mindset we, we are also running with. Well, I'm looking forward to where we are going. I mean, and it's also a useful <laughs> thing to say that, um, I, I, I think it's also a useful thing to say that for other developers that are looking to build for the world, I think the time is also ripe. And like, I mean, from our experience as well, investors are also ready to invest in companies building for the world. So. Yeah. The so do not right. limit yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd want us to talk about before we get into any queries that anybody could have? Um, no, we can go into questions. Okay. Paul, Angela, Gabriela. Um, yeah, hold on, hold on. Uh, before I get into questions, I think I'll I'll send that. I'm going to send a link for those who would like to join, uh, for joining Tunga. Then also, uh, for Madio, uh, we are having a hackathon. Yes, uh, I'm going to send that in the link. I might send the link. Yeah. Then, uh, I had other questions for a question for for Shubomi um where do you see uh convoy yes you've, you've talked about the the, the future of, of of convoy but um where do you see it specifically at the end at the end of the year do you have any predictions any specific predictions that you can make um, um so what we are trying to do today very specifically and very, very specifically is to just simplify web books, right? Yeah. So if you think about it by the end of the year, Convoy is in a stable position. Um, you can find many of the niche features you see in Twilo, in Stripe, in PagerDuty, in Figma, in Convoy, and you can pick your poison, pick the, pick the exact um, implementation you want. By the end of the year, yes, it is much stable, tested in production, um, benchmarked like, with billions of events and yeah, and then and then um, niche features in convoy. Yes, that's that's what we're looking at from so last end of the year. 
we should basically expect in the next in the near future to be able to run convoy without any third party queues. Is, is that possible? Is that something you can look forward to? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm yes. challenging the city. Oh, I know he's on this call. I'm challenging you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm challenging you to see how you can work towards that direction. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any questions from, from the crowd, from everyone who has been able to attend? If you don't think there are any questions that you can have right now, you probably need to take some time to better understand um, to, to understand and see how we can be able to help or support Shubomi and, the, and, and get convoy in the direction that they are going with. If you have any, if you have some downtime and you'd like to contribute to open source, I think this is a really, really great opportunity and platform for you to see how you can resolve potential challenges. Um, we have someone coming in, coming in, Ishmael has to say that this is a very fantastic project. However, it would be cool if Convoy could have some use cases. This will prob properly give some insights. What do you have to say about that? Um, so the first thing is, we, we think that, or I think that, um, there exist several use cases for convoy in three different like um, markets or uh, three different like segments of where people build this normal API we are used to, right? If yeah. you are building an API, you need web books, you need asynchronous communication. Now, on from that base of asynchronous communication is what sort of implementation is necessary for my company? Right, then we start to think about different use cases. For example, Twilio is an SMS API. You can imagine the billions of events that is going through Twilio every day. And, mm -hmm. I can, and I can say that because we have an SMS API using our cloud platform and we know how much events they push. In fact, they're the biggest. So mm -hmm. if you extrapolate that to Twilio, you can imagine the billions of them. So Twilio have invented some things to enable them do some form of weird rate limiting, which is powerful. So the use case in that scenario is you need high performing rate limiting to work in the environment if you are building something like Twilio, right? Um, if you're building a payment system, you need some form of security, some form of strong security that is different from what is the norm, right? Or what is the generic implementation of, of, of web books. So in essence, what I'm saying is that when you're an API provider, web books is not a straight road. Depending on what you are doing in your industry, you have some niche use cases that you can that, that you have. Um, the other use cases that exist are in the no-code tooling area where um, no-code tools require a lot of integration with third party systems. Um, so there is several use cases to be to be said around no-code tools. And the last area that I am super optimistic for, but I don't know what it will turn out to, is in the IoT market. I think the IoT market uses, um, or the IoT um, industry or developers have need for asynchronous communication. And because Convoy is a simple binary, there will be several use cases there that I cannot say exactly because we are still figuring it out. I don't know if that answered the question. I think to some extent, and, and we can all agree, because even when you when you stop and look at Python and um, and how it is specifically a sync IO, you find that it's trying to resolve specific challenges, even with like the volumes of um, of data it's able to handle. Um, but those are things that we are not able to explore at the moment or get into it. But I think if Convoy is able to provide certain solutions for those specific use cases. Um, I think it's something that everyone would want to know about. Um, maybe in the future, we can record something, like an example that shows this, this, this is what this is, this happened and this is how Convoy was able to resolve it. I think that would be more directed to, like more illustrative in one way or another. 
Yeah, I agree. Okay. Any other questions? Anything that you'd like to follow up with? You can you can reach out and before we close out today. Lynn, you're the only one sending in questions. <laughs> we, we want questions from everyone else. <laughs> um, uh, if there are no other questions, what would you like everyone who has been able to join today? What takeaway would what what would you like them to take away from this discussion, such that they know the value that you are trying to deliver? And given how different the product you've been able to put out is on a typical African market, but even generally worldwide, what should their takeaway be? Um, the takeaway is quite simple. Um, convoy is convoy is to web books as elastic search is to search. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's a good one. All um, right. So one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shubomi Oluwalana, for joining us. Thank you so much for, for enlightening us about webhooks and the different challenges that Convoy is coming in to resolve, uh, especially even going ahead to compare with the different things that we're already using on the market. Um, for everyone who has been able to join us today, would like to really thank you. If there are specific things you would like to learn about, if there, if there is a specific expert you are interested in, in listening to, please feel free to reach out to me uh, via LinkedIn and I'll be able to give you to, to, to see how we can get that person to join us here and be able to have or have an open discussion on how to resolve something. If you are an expert yourself, if there is a challenge that you feel you've been able to address within, um, within your lifetime as a developer, um, please feel free to reach out to us and we shall give you a platform that allows you to discuss challenges like this with a community of software developers. Um, I would like to encourage you to please pick up open source and build up ideas that um, Shubomi and Emmanuel were able to come up with uh in resolving specific challenges don't wait for somebody to to, to build the idea because they are floating out there this is your opportunity to 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 make a change if you identify a problem figure out a solution and build it and then i can host you here on as in tunga aspects but tuesdays <laughs> um i look forward to you joining us for any other events that we may have we do have a hackathon coming up and we've extended the date for registration to the 4th of March. We are hacking for global health. So if you do have ideas with regards to data and how different challenges can be resolved in the health sector, please go check out Madeira Hacks and uh, we are partnering with them to be able to resolve different challenges in Africa with regards to health. Please feel free to join Tunga and we shall give you an access to opportunities that allow you to launch your career in tech. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Paul, for being my co-host. I might have taken the, the, the entire conversation because I took time to enjoy the challenges that Convoy is, is resolving. Um, thank you so much, Lynn, for making this possible and setting this up. Um, I would also like to thank Mifa, who is in the background. You cannot see him, but he was also proactively trying to make this possible. Thank you for joining us and please feel free to check out Tunga.io and the Tunga Academy that gives you access to free resources to learn and upskill yourself as a developer. Thank you so much for joining us and have a wonderful day. Bye. 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 Bye.